Today we're going to talk about more sophisticated ways of comparing probability distributions. Let's think about the problem of comparing these two one-dimensional distributions. Let's call them P and Q. You might be wondering about deriving a distance between these. And you might think that why can't we just derive a distance by straight comparing these? Like just subtracting one from the other. It turns out that there is a measure like this. It's called total variation. This gives you an L1 distance between these two probability distributions. But this doesn't always give a very satisfying result. Let's take a look at why. Suppose you had these two probability distributions, P in red and Q in blue. Because they don't have any support in common, if you subtract everywhere where P is positive, uh, from Q, then you'll get all of P integrated, and this integrates to 1. Same with Q. So if you add those up and multiply it by a half, you get 1 as the distance between these two probability distributions. And you always get that when the distributions have disjoint support. But let's take a look at these two. Now, these two distributions to us look a lot closer. They peak in similar places, and they have lows in similar places, and yet the total variation distance here is also 1. So there's something wrong here. Our intuition says that these are further apart than these. And the key insight here is that it's not always correct to compare probability distributions in a vertical direction. Actually, this horizontal direction of how displaced one distribution is from another along the x-axis uh, gives rise to a notion called ground distance. And it might be important to take into account the ground distance when computing a distance between probability distributions. This gives rise to the class of distances that are called optimal transport, or earth movers distances. He, each of these distances uses something called a ground cost. The ground cost is the cost of moving one point or one unit of mass from one place in the ground space to another. Effectively, EMD metrics lift the ground metric defined between points to compare entire data sets. And let's see how they do that. They do that by way of something called transportation cost. This, a good analogy for this is actually this earth movers vehicle. This vehicle is literally transporting a pile of dirt from one location to another. And if you measure how much work this vehicle is doing, then you get an idea of how distant those piles of dirt from the beginning to the end were. The earth mover's distance between two distributions, similarly, is proportional to the minimum amount of work required to convert one distribution to another. Why minimum? It's so that you're not counting the distance if, let's say, the vehicle moves all around. Uh, it moves all around the city, but you want it to go directly from one spot to another. In order to solve this kind of problem, you need to solve an objective function called optimal transport. And this objective is a constrained optimization problem. Let's see what it is, what the constraints and the optimization are. The optimization is to come up with a valid transport plan gamma. This is a capital gamma here. This valid transport plan is actually a joint probability distribution. So you have the distribution P sub R here and the distribution of P sub theta here and you're looking at couplings between those. Each entry in this joint distribution says how much of the mass from here you need to distribute to each of these bits. But you can't just use any valid transport plan. A valid transport plan is just one whose marginals agree with the two distributions. You want to use the best one possible given this cost. This cost is given by this ground distance matrix D. This ground distance matrix, if you keep the, the mass in its place, is zero. But if you move the mass farther and further from where it started, you incur greater and greater costs. So the cost of a transport plan is just pointwise multiplying this matrix by this matrix and summing up all the entries, and it's given here. So what we want is to minimize this cost subject to the constraint that one of the marginals of this joint distribution is the original one and the other marginal 
is the final one. So the, at the end of the day, the transport plan will tell you what you do with the mass in each bin and how you spread it out to bins in the target distribution. When it's viewed as an optimization, it becomes quickly clear that this is actually just a linear program. Um, so you're minimizing the total cost subject to these two linear constraints. So you can solve this with an LP solver. LP solvers are pretty fast, but they're not infinitely fast. They're still an optimization. So this could give rise to more creative ways of solving this. And one of the more creative ways of solving this is to look at the dual of this linear program. Now, I won't get into a lot of linear programming theory, but whenever you have a linear program that's a minimization in its primal form, you can turn it into a maximization problem. Basically, somehow, the constraints become part of the objective, and the objective goes into some constraints. When you take a look at this, actually, instead of trying to find the transport plan, which is the vector that you're trying to minimize for here, you're trying to find a different function y. And this different, distant, different function y actually maximizes the difference between these two probability distributions. And this is called the dual form of EMD, and it involves trying to find a witness function. Now, what is a witness function? It's any function f that maximizes the discrepancy between these two probability distributions. So you have this function f, which takes on high values where, where p of r is high, uh, but very low values where p of theta is high. So it somehow exposes the difference between these two probability distributions when you take the expectation of this function with respect to each of the probability distributions. So how do you find this kind of witness function? In general, it's also a maximization objective, and in general, it wouldn't have been any faster. You can use a lot of tricks to find this witness function. Let's think about one trick. One trick is just to take the histogram, which represents the difference between two probability distributions, and use a clever way of decomposing it. So one um, proposal has been wavelet EMD where you take the distance between difference between two probability distributions as a difference histogram and you wavelet transform it. Since wavelets are a rich basis, this is an approximation of a function that maximizes the discrepancy between these two probability distributions. We recently had a paper on this kind of idea called diffusion EMD. Diffusion EMD takes histograms at different scales of resolution and and it does the histograms on a graph by using graph diffusion based kernel density estimation then it takes the difference of these multi-scale histograms with each other and this gives you an earth movers distance so again usually the pattern with a dual emd is to find histograms with different sized bins of the same two distributions and to subtract their histograms at many different scales. Let's, now let's think back to total variation. Total variation had a problem because it was just comparing distributions point-wise. But the way that this is solved in the dual form of the EMD is we're not just going to use one bin size, we're going to use wider and wider and wider bins. So now if you go back to the problem we're having here, if you used a much wider bin, then these two distributions would occur in the same bin. And at that level of resolution, they'd have no difference. Whereas this distribution would not be different in many different scales of bins. So it would be clear that this distribution comes close together at smaller scales of histogramming, and this distribution only comes together at wider scales of histogramming. And this is actually the key to the dual form of the earth movers distance. Let's, let's go further. Let's think about whether density estimation is even necessary. Do we even need density estimation to compute the distance between two, two probability distributions? It turns out you actually don't need an explicit density estimate. You can actually use an affinity kernel defined on data to compute a distribution distance. 
And how do you do this? Using our old tricks of a distance matrix between the data and converting that to an affinity matrix. Now, if you have that kind of affinity or kernel matrix, then you can just compute this quantity by sampling pairs of points um, in each of the probability distributions, and you get an estimate of a distance called maximum mean discrepancy, which is a real actual distance, and in the limit of many points, actually um, follows all of the criteria for being a real distance. This is how MMD works. You pick a pair of points from distribution one, you pick a pair of points from distribution two, and you test how similar the within sample pairs are based on kernel affinity to how similar cross sample pairs are with the same kernel affinity. So let's look at this formula again. You have this kernel affinity between pairs of points in the same distribution, same with other distribution Q, and you subtract from that cross distribution kernel affinities. And if in general your two distributions are separated more, then this number will be smaller and these numbers will be higher and will give a higher distance. But if they're completely melded together, then on average there's no difference and you'll get a zero. And this is what MMD is. And this is pretty attractive because it can be done by sampling and it's also completely differentiable right away.